Hello, so this is going to be part three of my Hackintosh guide. Um, so right now I'm installing Cakewalk and Lion onto my USB flash drive. So you can see I have located my Lion DMG, I've selected my motherboard, and I've selected the flash drive I want it to go to, which is a untitled flash drive because I had just done a fresh format on it, and I'm just letting it install. It took about uh, 27 minutes, I believe, and so this is a 40 time speed increase and as you can see it's done and now you can just take out your flash drive and put it in your computer and so the next part we're going to do is going into the BIOS and I'm going to be showing you what settings you need to change to ensure that you can properly boot off this flash drive you just created using Cakewalk 4.1 and um, going straight to Lion 7 or 10.7.0 Okay, so now the computer is on and I do have the flash drive plugged in. And so we're going to be pressing the delete key to get into the BIOS. And now we're going to integrate peripherals. And the only thing we're going to change is the PCH data control mode from IDE, which is a default to AHCI. I'm going to save and exit. And now it's going to boot into the flash drive and install. Okay, so before I was recording with an Nikon D5000 and it just wasn't working well with the screen, so I switched to a different camera. Now I'm just setting up the computer like you normally would, just to skip through this real fast. And so now we are going to be at the desktop, as you can see, and the um, resolution is not what it should be. This is a 1920-1200 monitor, and it's obviously not running at that resolution. So right now what we're doing is getting the Intel HG3000 graphics working. So right now I am uh, plugging in a SanDisk flash drive that has all the kecks. I need for the entire installation of Ethernet, LAN, uh, audio, all that stuff. It's all in this um, folder that I'll be putting in the description so you can just download it and follow exactly what I did. So first we're going to be opening the folder and launching Chameleon. And like I said before this is to get the Intel HD 3000 graphics working. So we're just going to install this like you normally would. Nothing special here. This should, it's going to finish real quick. As you see, it's already done. And so you can just go ahead and close that window. And now you're going to launch the Chimera installer. I believe that's how you say it. And you're going to go through this installer, which is going to edit the plist. And that, that's done. And now we're going to do is open up our extras folder. So we're going to go new finder window, Macintosh HD. We're going to go to the extras. Uh, and we're going to just drag over the Symbios, which is the it has a Mac Mini identifier in it, the Mac Mini 5.1 to be exact. So now we're going to um, get the our wireless network adapter working. Um, we we have to use a wireless network adapter for this computer because we don't have uh, Ethernet going to it. And so this installer will work for quite a bit of um, wireless network little dongle things or whatever you have. Um, the drivers are pretty standard across a lot of platforms so this might work for you I mean you can try it if you need to use a wireless USB adapter um, but it's not mandatory so now we're going to be running disk utility because this is one of the most important steps of a Hackintosh is repairing your permissions so we're selecting our boot drive hitting repair disk permissions and we're going to let the whole thing run I sped this up it takes about 10 or 5 minutes now it's complete and we're just going to restart So the machine is currently rebooting and now we are back to the desktop and as you can see once it try or decides to focus our graphics are at full res 1920 by 1200 and full graphics acceleration um, so now your graphics are completely working and I'm just connecting to the network uh, my personal home network so that I can update to 10.7.1 because we're currently at 10.7.0 and um, we just, it's good, you know, it's nice to be at the latest version of the Mac OS X10 because, you know, it has bug fixes for certain programs and whatnot. So it's just a good idea. I mean, if you can have your Hackintosh at the latest operating system, then it's always a good idea. So now I'm connected to the network. I'm just going to show you that it is connected. I'm going to launch YouTube. And YouTube is up and running. So we are on the network and we're good to go. Okay, so before we update to 10.7.1, we're just going to 
get the LAN working and you can't really see it because my camera was being weird it always changes exposure but we're running multi-beast and we're checking system utilities we're going to uh, bootloaders or Kexen bootloaders and we're going to the network tab and we're installing LNX 2 Max uh, Realtek drivers so that, again that was system utilities um, the bootloaders and then LN, LN2X's Mac Realtek installer or something like that I'm not exactly sure but you should see it. it's LNX something actually L there it is LNX 2 Mac Realtek so just select that and it's going to bring you to a new installer which you're seeing right now and you're going to install the release version not the debug version going to install that and I'm uh, again sorry for the it highlights being blown I doesn't really know why I can fix that there's no manual controls in the camera so there's one more thing we need to install before we restart and um, that's going to be a IO network family text so we're going to go to MacTOS HD we're gonna to go to our library or I'm sorry our system we're gonna to go to libraries and we're going to go to the extensions, open up the folder that you downloaded, and you're going to dra grab the IO network family text. You're going to authenticate and just replace the one that's currently there. So now, after this is done and it is done, we're going to launch Disk Utility. Once I close all these windows, don't hit the restart on that installer yet, just launch Disk Utility. And we're going to again repair our permissions because this is a very important step. Um, this is one you don't want to forget. And if you do, you'll probably run into many errors. Probably just a plain kernel panic that will make the system um, unusable. Maybe fixable with a safe mode boot. But now we're rebooting back into. That was sped up, obviously. It's not that fast. Um, back into the desktop after we installed all of the Ethernet drivers. So now what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be demonstrating how the Mac App Store as is currently does not work. It appears to work and everything seems to be fine, but this is what's wrong and, and I'll show you how to fix it. So just connect it to my wireless network. And now what I'm going to do is sign into my Apple ID. And I do sign in correctly. This is the Apple ID I've used many times and it's I know it works. So let's I made a little error right there. But now it's correct, and you hit sign in. It says this computer or device is not recognized, and it won't go any further than that. And you can't sign in, so that's a problem. And so now I'm showing you how to fix it. So go to System Preferences, your Network tab, say New Interface, and just delete that interface you just made, which is the Ethernet interface. Now you're going to go to MacTOS HD Libraries Preferences. You're going to scroll all the way down to where it says System Configuration. And you're going to delete two of the uh, kecks there. One is the network identifications.plist, and the other one is com.apple.network.identification.plist. So you're going to delete those two, as I'm doing right now, and you're going to empty the trash. And now I'm just going to run Disk Utility to make sure that what we just deleted doesn't cause any problems down the line as um, we're installing different things. So I'm just repairing the disk commissions. And it didn't really even repair anything, so it wasn't necessary, but it's a good idea. Um, not worth it, the hassle of having to redo the machine just because you didn't do that. So now we're going to update to 10.7.1, so you can just use a standard Apple software update, which is what I'm doing right now. And so it's loaded, you're just going to hit show details because there's two things I don't want to install. And so I'm going to uncheck the other two things and just leave the Mac OS X update there I'm going to agree to the terms and there it is it's just a small update of 17 megabytes and it's done and we're going to hit restart and the reason you do not need to do a disk or disk permissions repair when you're installing updates like this is because after the update is installed the installer does it automatically um, so the updates now done that was sped up by about 20 times um, took about six minutes or so now we're back into the desktop and so now we are at 10.7.1 and 10.7.1 for some reason they redid the audio drivers and the audio doesn't work anymore and so I'm showing you how to fix that but right now I'm showing you or demonstrating to you that the Mac App Store does work now after you did those fixes so we need, right now what we need to do is 
transition from the 10.7 to 10.7.1 update, it always messes with my um, my little wireless adapter, so I'm just fixing that right now. Sorry for the iPhone. And so it just uh, it's always a pain to get it working again, and so now it's working. And I'm just gonna now it's back on the network, so I can get on with the demonstration now. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to sign in with my Apple ID. And almost done with that. This is the same exact ID I did last time. Same password, same everything. And okay, so now you see I successfully logged into my account. And so I'm going to go to the purchases tab and just download a small app and show you that it, it works and it, um, it installs correctly. So I download a little app bar app and it installed and you can launch it and use you could do it for any any app. Any one works. So that's nice and that's working now. And so the next part, we're going to be getting the audio working again. So to get the audio to work, there's going to be a couple things, or actually just one thing you need to delete. And that one thing is going to be this ALC eight XX um HDA or something like that, I believe. You'll, you'll see it there. It's in the same location as mine is. So now I'm just going to be going into the root of the machine. This is one way you can do it. Or you can just go down to Macintosh HD. And you're going to go into the extra extensions. And you're going to be deleting ALC 8XX HDA, I believe. That's what it's called. You're going to go into your system, your library. You're going to go all the way down to extensions. And you're going to be deleting Apple HDA. So you can just search for it. And you just find the tab. There it is, Apple HDA. You're going to delete that one. And once that's done, you can just empty the trash. And these are needed to, because you're going. What we're going to be doing is installing a rollback driver, and that's done with Multi Beast. You're going to continue, agree. You're going to be checking system utility, so it does a disk permissions repair. You're going to go to Kex and, and enablers. You're going down to the audio, install the ALC 8XX and the rollback driver and we're also installing the um, ALC A89 in that little sub menu gonna hit install so since we check the um, system utilities and, and those things in multi beast we don't have to do a disk utilities disk commissions repair after because it's already doing that if that's part of the installer and we can close that and just gonna restart the machine after this the audio should be working at least for me it did so the machine is turning back on now and we are at the desktop so the last thing I want to do is you see the audio is working now before it would show a little error and it wouldn't do anything and now the audio is working so if you were to plug in speakers you'd have full working audio um, even through all the channels it would work so that's a nice addition and so now I'm just going to be showing you the performance of the Intel HD 3000 graphics this is Modern Combat Domination, which is a, I believe, $10 game, something like that, that's available through the Mac App Store. So here we're just done. Um, these settings are on medium, and the resolution is 1920 by 1200. And it's really, it's really not laggy at all. I mean, this isn't a very graphics intense game, but it gives you an idea of the kind of moderate gaming you can be doing on this machine. So thanks for watching my video. Goodbye.